Um, so let me go ahead and record this. All right, so let's try this again. Rank 10 Prover with Prove It. I'm just gonna breeze through this, you guys, because I really want to deliver this content and I just don't know what's gonna happen with this service. So um, tonight we're talking about intentional leadership and um, getting started, you know, I found a really awesome quote that I think changes the perspective a little bit on, you know, really what is leadership. And so it says leadership is the art of motivating a group of people to, so if you think about leadership in this perspective of you're motivating a group of So if you're motivating people, can everybody hear me? I feel like this is going to be test. Hello, are you all there? Hey, it's Mick. Can you guys hear me? Jess, can you hear me? I'm going to give Sylvia about one more minute. And if we can't get a connection, I'm going to step up and run the Zoom. Um, we'll talk on a topic. Nick, I think Sylvia got kicked off, so go ahead and roll with it. After you unmute yourself. The only problem is I can't start and stop the recording. How about everybody, everybody leave the meeting and in two minutes log back in. I'll switch usernames. I'll log in on Brian's account so we can get a fresh recording to load to the YouTube channel. Or I can just roll with it and we can post it. And then it'll show them that whenever things don't work out, we adapt and we go. What do you think, Jess? I say we're all here. I say roll with it, dude. All right. So <clears throat> welcome, everybody. Nick Couch coming to you live from Las Vegas. It is beautiful weather out here. And this is exactly, it's perfect. It's perfect timing for this to happen because what do leaders do? We step in, we step up, we do it. Like I didn't, I don't have notes. I don't have a topic. I don't, I'm not going to teach on the same topic as Sylvia because that wouldn't, th that would throw me for a curveball. So I'm just going to, I'm going to roll with a new topic and we're just going to go. We have about a dozen people on and we're just going to do it. So I'm super excited about leadership. 
for those of you that got a chance to follow my Instagram story last night, I was able to fly down to San Diego, spend the evening with Brian James, and literally our whole night was talking about leadership and playing a bigger role at Prove It and all of these things that we've been talking about and leveraging this platform to grow your business. I think I might have a spot to prop my phone up. Maybe not. This will work though. So this is perfect timing. So leadership. I mean, if you guys could have been at LCD, Brian Underwood gave us a pamphlet and he asked us all to write our own definition of leadership. And it's so funny that 150 people had 150 different answers and explanations and def their own definition of leadership. And uh, I like where Sylvia started going with that conversation. It's, it's a person that motivates a group of people to move forward. And that's exactly what we're doing here. Prove it, except for it's a volunteer army. Like everybody that I see on my screen, Jade, Pam, Lori, they're voluntarily getting on the Zoom to learn something. I didn't call and force or push or like, I never try and push somebody. Like I'll put my arm out if they need it, if they need to grab on so I can pull them alongside with me at where I'm going, that's one thing, but I'm never going to drag somebody. Like they have to want, they have to want to go in the same direction that I'm going. And it's just, it's amazing to see from the top down at Prove It Here, how we handle leadership and the time and money invested. Sorry, I think I might have some background noise. I'm going to have to walk away. Um, the time and money that, Ryan Underwood and the company have invested for us to train on leadership. So these Zooms right here, plugging in every week is training you to be a better leader. But if you would just get on this Zoom and you don't apply the things that we're teaching, the things that you're learning, it's useless. Like you actually have to apply what you're doing. And it goes the same thing with personal development and audiobooks and reading books. If you don't take the information that you read or learned or watched on a vlog or a podcast or wherever you're getting your information from, if you don't apply it, it's not going to amount to anything. It's not going to move the needle forward. Nothing's going to, nothing's going to change. Change is constant. Like we're always changing. So are you changing for the better or are you changing for the worse? Like it's just, it's huge to make sure that if you want to be, if you want to be a leader, you don't, like I hear people say all the time, oh, the person I signed up with, oh, Sylvia, you're back. <laughs> Sylvia, how's your yes. connection now? Right. I have no idea. It's like, you know, what's that? I was just buying time since we couldn't hear you. Oh my gosh, I, well, I, I powered everything off and I'm hoping that that will help. And all I can say is if it fails again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have to go somewhere else and I'll record it and then we can just upload the the recording later perfect well okay. i just did some fill in the blank leadership talk to buy time till we got you back so roll with it girl okay cool all right so um leadership is the art of motivating a group of people to act towards achieving a common goal so if you think about this you guys from the perspective of you know we're all different parts of the body right we're all a large team and we all have a common goal in place so where exactly do you fit into that and you know, being able to kind of fine tune, like, what are your, where do your, where do your people fit into that? Where do you fit into the, the bigger slice of the pie? Um, so leadership isn't always about how you can be led. It's how you can play a role in the team dynamic. And I think when we start to look at it from this perspective, um, it really changes and shifts the view on it. Um, so a couple, you know, just questions, so to speak, is, you know, how can you step up and assist your leader? And like, what are you doing to play an active role in that? Because, um, you know, as myself being a leader, I'm always trying to figure out like, what can I do to back Brian up? What can I do to make sure that I have his back? Um, and, and vice versa, how can you step up and assist your leaders? So where is it that they need the gaps filled in? So just the same thing is like, Brian's always trying to figure out where do you need me? Because maybe I don't necessarily need to have him hold my hand all the time, but I need him in a different um, a different area, you know, if that makes sense. So it's like asking yourself the question, where can you step up? Where do you feel like as a, as a larger part of this whole group, you know, where can you step up and offer a little bit more leadership? 
Um, and then also, you know, where do you see that yourself that you can, you can reach down into your organization and say, you know, what, what can I do more of on a larger scale instead of it just being like, well, I'm the, I'm leading this group and I have to do it all like this. And, you know, has to have this system in place and it has to do that. That's not necessarily always the, the case because remember, we have a common goal. We all have a common goal, right? We all, all want to be successful. We all want to share ketones with everybody. Um, we all want to help change other people's lives, right? Um, and so when you start to look at it that from that perspective, I think it gives you the ability to step outside of the box and say, okay, wait, it's not only just about me being a leader or me needing to be led. Um, so, and I would say that this actually goes for all ranks, um, because, you know, if you so choose, you know, the second that you start signing promoters onto your team, you're a leader, so to speak, right? I mean, you might not have full on leadership skill set, but that doesn't mean that those people aren't looking to you for direction. They're looking to you help show them like what they need to do each day. What, what do they need to do each week? How do they grow and build this business? Um, so some questions again are, are you looking to be led and what kind of attributes does that look like? Um, are you looking for leadership? Are you being coachable? Are you communicating your needs? Are you in communication in general? Um, are you self-aware of your strengths and also self-aware of your shortcomings? Because if you're looking for somebody to lead you, I feel like these are things that definitely need to be communicated. I'm usually an over, over communicator. So I'm always like, you know, um, and, and over my almost two year journey, I've been very communicated with Brian, like, this is what I need more of, or this is what I need right now, or this is where I feel like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing, help. So um, you have to play an active role in stepping up to that. You have to also be willing to say, you know, what is it that I'm really looking for instead of um, getting frustrated that you're not where you should be or getting frustrated with your sponsor or getting frustrated with, you know, the fact that maybe you're not getting what you feel like it is that you need. If you find yourself in that place, these are good questions to ask yourself. Like, how are you responding? How are you behaving in this whole structure as a whole? Um, another thing is, if you're looking to be led, you know, are you tolerating people's blame, shame, and justify? Are you, are you kind of partnering along with that? Are you listening to people um, complain about things that are happening in their business and you're not actually stepping up to lead and say, hey, actually, you know what? That kind of language really isn't going to help grow our business. That's really not going to help change the situation. Let's figure out a way that we can turn this around to be positive. Um, are you redirecting their energy? You know, if people are talking bad, this is whether it's somebody in your sideline, if it's somebody in your downline, if it's even somebody in your upline, you're responsible as somebody who's leading a movement to redirect people's energy so that their energy actually is in flow with um, leadership skills, leadership dynamics. Um, so are you stepping up to assist or are you sitting back with expectation that somebody's going to come along and drag you? Are you stepping up? If you see something needs to be done, like let's say, for example, you know, um, hey, my team is asking for a PDF on something. Like if you see that that needs to be done, instead of expecting somebody else to do it, why not step up and do it? Why not step up and be that person who is the bigger you know, a, a piece of the bigger whole and contribute what you can contribute as well to leadership. Um, let's see. Do you have your leaders back? Do you boldly step up in scenarios where somebody is looking to complain? Again, this goes back to like um, the blame, shame, and justify. And that is a very important thing because your mindset, what you speak, what you're willing to surround yourself and partner with is really going to dictate the outcome of your business. So if you're, if you're having people who are coming to you and you're frustrated and you're not turning around and redirecting their energy, that's on you. Don't expect that you're going to have a bunch of positive experiences if you're allowing negativity to come around you. And an example of that would be somebody complaining about, you know, something with improve it, like, oh my gosh, customer service is horrible. Like, I can't believe that. That's when you step in and say, hey, you know what? Actually, this is not the place to have that conversation. Let's get connected with a leader and see if we can't get 
things resolved and figured out. Um, let's see here. So, in my belief, leading is a state of mind. Yes, you have to have skills that follow that, but you can learn those as you go. But leading really is a state of mind. It's a, it's a matter of whether you're willing to step up and do those things that need to be done. Um, and positivity is a major component of that. Having an attitude of, I can, I will find a way, is going to take you much further than negativity, complaining, um, lacking action or movement. Um, it's really impossible to lead anyone when you're in that kind of a state, right? Like you would not want to be led by Nick or Kelly or um, Brian James if they were just like constantly bitching and complaining about stuff, right? You'd be like, oh man, like he just has such a bad attitude about things. Like that's frustration. That's a place of frustration that nobody should have to deal with. So when you're looking at whether you want to be led or whether you're looking to lead people, what is your attitude surrounding that? Do you have an attitude of positivity? I'm gonna find a way, success is the only option, not blame, complain, and justify. Um, also, so let's kind of switch gears. If you're looking to lead people, so if you have a team already and you're like, I need to figure out, like, what do I need to do with these people? First things first is, are you in um, personal development daily? That's the number one way that you're going to learn and grow. Are you plugging in to the things that we have to offer as a company? Are you plugging into the trainings? Are you going to LCD? Are you connected with your um your, your leadership up in your COC, you know, your, your pro champ in your rank tens, are you connected with those people? If you're looking to lead others um, and you want to, uh, I, I believe that it's important to follow the standard that prove it sets when it comes to that, right? Um, because we want it to kind of be standard across the board. We want everybody to be a part of this amazing movement. Um, are you accountable to your own actions and are you being honest with where you're at? This is a huge one because I think that sometimes people get um, signed up, they might have success like really fast. Um, and maybe they have some experience from another place, right? But they come in and they're just like, I don't, I don't need you. I don't need you. I got this. I got this. They're not being team players. Um, they're not really being accountable to their own actions because they're thinking, these are just my people. I got this. I got my team. Well, nobody is yours. <laughs> You know what I mean? They might have joined your organization, but you don't own people. Um, so be accountable to your own behavior and your own actions and, and sit down and be honest with where you are, because if you really want to be in a community led, um, you know, organization, a community based company, then it is all about joining together and working as a team. Um, are you even temperature in all situations? A leader does not go into panic mode freak out mode when tough situations arise. And I have seen this numerous times, like something is an issue, something hasn't been dealt with. And you know, the, the COC is over there just like freaking out in a three way message with that person and with that, with their upline. And it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like people are looking to you to be the example. So if you get hysterical because customer service responds not the way that you wanted them to about a situation or your customer or your, or your promoter's customer is freaking out and you freak out with them, what do you think is going to happen? That whole situation is going to crumble to the ground. But if you can remain even tempered and you're like a, like a thermometer, you know, and you don't ever go too hot and you don't ever go too cold, you're going to be setting the example. In those situations, you have to just be calm and say, okay, so let's just figure out what the best scenario and situation is here. Let's take a moment. Everybody calm down. Always lead with, you know, we will get the situation resolved. Please be assured we will get the situation resolved because either way, one way or the other, a situation will, will get resolved, whether it's from, you know, your rank 10, whether it's from um, your legend leader or whether it's from the company and, I'm, I'm sure everyone would, every leader up higher up in the levels would agree with me. Like, we don't want people to be unhappy. So you set the example when you're dealing with um, your like customers that are within your downline and lower, um, like newer promoters uh, who are coming on, maybe aren't used to our culture. Like you have to be the one to set that. You have to be the one to say, hey, 
calm down, take a breath, everything's gonna be okay. Um, are you able to take constructive criticism? This is something that I personally, you know, struggled with in the beginning because I, it's not that I didn't want to learn, it's just that I was like super sensitive. And so if somebody said like, um, you know, in a harsher tone, like da 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 da, I would just be like, oh my God, oh my God, like I'm horrible, I suck at this, see, I knew it. And I would go into like a little panic mode. Um, and so I'm learning over the last two years to get better and better with that. And take every situation that arises where you're being led by somebody and they're coming to you as an opportunity for growth, not as an opportunity for you to get pissed off or freak out or, you know, think that they're not wanting the best for you. Um, are you being humble? Cause that's an important one. Uh, you never want to be, you know, thinking like, Oh my gosh, I had some success. I'm the bomb. You know, you always want to lead from a place of being humble and helping and being a servant to your team. Are you in the trenches with your team? Are you holding their hand? Are you helping new people get started doing mixers? Are you helping new people get started with their first conversations? Um, instead of just throwing a PDF at them or instead of just being like, cool, awesome, oh my God, you signed up. Like I'm expecting you to go rank six by the end of next month. You know, that's not being a good leader. Um, are you solution oriented? This is probably one of the biggest things. This is so huge because if you can adopt the attitude that you will find a solution no matter what it is, it's going to take you so far, not only in your business, but in life. I'm the type of person I've had so many people, you know, over the last 10 years of my life tell me like, you are the, t like, if people come to me with problems, literally, I'm like, okay, well, here's a fix to that. Here, here's a way that we can handle that. Here's a different solution for that because I don't take like just laying down and accepting it as an answer, um, which is why I have been successful because I don't take no for an answer. I don't let circumstances define where I'm at, where I'm going or who I am. Um, and are you playing full out? And this is one that I think that it's easy to just kind of, you know, think that we are, but really, if you become honest with yourself, like, are you really doing the daily things that you need to do? Because it's easy to get caught up in this mindset of like, oh, I'm leading a team. I got a team to lead. But are you, are you personally, again, being that person who is leadable? Are you being the person who's like, I'm in there doing this stuff. I'm doing exactly what I'm asking you to do. Um, and then are you working as a unit or are you acting on your own behalf segregating your team from the whole unit because i can tell you personally you will go so much farther if you're actually connecting your people if you're teaching your people to connect their people then they're going to teach their people to connect their their people and when people feel like they're a part of a big movement they're not going to leave you when people feel like they're segregated and they only have you know this one person that they can go to um it really does not create the culture that we want in this. And I, I have seen so many times where people have had, you know, they signed up under somebody that somebody would never get them connected. They had no idea who was a part of their sponsorship tree. That person quit. They've been over here struggling, dangling, you know, hoping that they could operate their business and they have nobody. And it, it takes them months to figure out what they're a part of. So that starts from the front line. That starts from you laying that down and setting and creating that culture within your community. Um, and then, you know, leading isn't staking claim over individuals. I kind of touched on that, but you don't own anybody. Nobody is not your personal property. They're not your people. They're not your, you know, team. Like, yes, they're a part of your team, but they're not your people. So don't ever say like my promoter or my this, they're not yours. You don't own them. Um, and leading does not have an ego so that's a huge thing too is like just remember that if you're wanting to step up in and lead or be led like the ego has to stop at the door um and sometimes we don't even know that it's our ego chiming in so there's a lot of great um leadership tools on that um Let's see, leaders know how to ask for direction when needed. Um, don't be afraid to reach out and actually connect with people and ask um, people in your line of sponsorship for help, for direction, for wisdom, because if they've gone before you, then they have obviously a lot to offer. 
Um, and then le leaders pour into others. They pour into them time. They pour into them money. If you have that, a bit of, you know, availability to give and get them to events or run incentives. Um, and they pour in resources. So always be, that's where that personal development comes in again, because the more that you're developing yourself, the more that you really have to give to your team. Um, so that's kind of it in a nutshell. I hope that that gives you guys maybe a different perspective, some things to think about, some takeaways that maybe you can see like, hey, you know what, maybe I could do this differently, or maybe I need to do less of this and more of this. Um, so I have a call to action and that is just asking you to get real and identify where are you on that level of leadership of like, do you need more coaching right now? Do you need more leadership right now? Um, and if you didn't make it to LCD and you know, people who did connect with them because there was so much amazing information, um, at this last LCD. So identify where you are, reach out to your um, COC or your pro champ or your rank 10 or, or legend, depending on, you know, where you're at and um, let them know, just communicate with them, you know, Hey, you know what? I think that I need to step up more and these are the areas that I need to be more accountable. Or I think I, you know, um, would like to do X, Y, Z, whatever has struck you in the zoom as like, Hmm, maybe I need to do that. Think about that and reach out to your, your leader and let them know. Um, and next, reach out to some people on your team and ask them how they are, what are their goals for November, and how you can best support them. Because it's the beginning of the month, there's no better time to partner with people on your team and really figure out like, where did they end last month and where do they wanna go in November? This is an exciting time, we have some new, products, some new flavors launching. So really get with some people on your team and just check in with them and ask them how they are. So with that, I am finished. I hope you guys have an incredible weekend and thank you all for being patient with this um, situation with uh, the internet. So I hope you all have an incredible night. Thank I, you, guys. Yes. Thanks for um, helping, Nick. <laughs>